Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business radio show studio. I'm Sean Murphy and I am flying solo today without my co-host who, unfortunately, Mikkel, is really not very well. So we, it's just me and, fortunately, our guest. So, no, I won't be boring you totally to tears. <laughs> Let's just do um, a little bit of housekeeping, uh, housekeeping, and then I'm going to introduce our, our guest properly, Jennifer Bryan. So, how can you listen in? We are on Audible, iTunes, Spotify. We are on FM ninety five point one and a hundred. Point two FM. We're on Google Podcasts, Alexa, and Spreaker. You can also join us on our Substack, which is the Women in Business Radio Show. Substack.com. So, announcements. As ever, we have the annual Women in Business Big Show coming up at Longfield Academy, and in 2024, it's on the 8th of August. And we will have our full range of sponsors and exhibitors, and it looks and speakers. Of course, we have all around 15 speakers there. So it's it's sort of Looking like it's going to be as as exciting and vibrant as it has been in the previous years. So we're really, really looking forward to that. But let me now introduce our guest in the studio properly. So it's Jennifer Bryan, who is a TEDx and global speaker. She's a published author and a managing director of AB Change Consultancy, which is her own business. She's also the vice president of the Association of Change Professionals in the UK. And I wonder if you can guess what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> change. <laughs> We are going to be, we're going to be talking about change. Now, I haven't got a title for this show yet. Um, I've come up with one. I'm not sure if it's a bit naff. It is all change, how to successfully manage change in your business. And Jennifer has manage change and help people manage change in large corporates as well as micro businesses one man bands that sort of thing so welcome into the studio jennifer Thank you very much. It's great to be here and talk about how we put people at the heart of decision making. Yes, it's um, because very often that's not exactly how it works, is it? We we sit here and we, we, you know, if if you work, if if you are a sole proprietor, I think very often we're implementing change and we're looking at um, what needs to happen and we, we sort of forget ourselves. Um, and I think if we're managing other people, if we have a business with a lot of staff in it, and also, but but also the change process isn't just about staff, is it? It's also about customers. So it could be all sorts of. It could be customers. It could be other stakeholders. It could be you know all sorts of people across the board that you need to include in this process. Uh, but the, the key there is people, isn't it? And I think very often yes. we focus on things, processes, yes. uh, technology, all of you. Know. We we get very. Um, are blinded by the glittering mm. uh, glamour of gizmos and gadgets and doing stuff um, from that standpoint. And what we actually really need to focus on, as you've rightly said, is is the people. And the people um, are. It's a much broader perspective than sometimes we think about. I've worked with a number of different organisations, and they'll um, they'll do you know whip out their a stakeholder engagement map or, or do the stakeholder analysis. <laughs> they, they got lo- loads of bits of paper and technology and it all whizzes round and pings and, here. Yeah, and, and yeah. they've only included the people who are actually in the decision-making room. And I'm like, um, what about everybody else? You know, what about all the other people who actually you're going to need their help? You may not need it all the time. You may not need it. Um, you may only need it at certain points. Or you may actually just need to understand where they're coming from so that you communicate mm. right. But you're going to need to understand their perspective um, from that standpoint. So it's, it's, it's broadening, as you say, broadening that out to the suppliers, the customers, the clients, the mm-hmm. staff, the, the different um, uh, function, business functions uh, within your, depending on the size of organization, will depend on... Mm just how, how broad that needs to be. I mean, I've seen this working, I've, I've seen this done badly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen very, it badly very, 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 yeah, very, very badly. My background is in local government and I think the classic thing there is introducing new IT system oh. where it's introduced, people 
can't use it. The training is appalling. It assumes that you can use it, that you understand it, that everybody looks at things in the same way. And And we don't. And, and we just and, and we, we, we just don't and, and, and very often it isn't it certainly wasn't you know I may be doing you know things you know disservice now things might have moved on but very often it wasn't intuitive it it worked and it, and it and the pe- the IT people understood it but when it came down to technicians and people that needed to input the information it wasn't intuitive a, a, a button wasn't obvious that it needed to be pressed you didn't you had to remember we had to actually remember all of the processes there wasn't any Thing that led you through. Oh, I've, and got, I've got so many stories, so many stories on, on, mm. on just those different elements um, in, a, across the board in lots of different organizations. I mean, there was one I was working with and I said, we need to um, create a test group and that requires going out to all the different um, areas of the business and we need to mm-hmm. get permission because it was within a government department, you need to get permission and so forth so that's, and that's going to take time in there to really do this appropriately you know get that people-centric um perspective and they said oh we, well, we, we need to spend is, we need to spend the money by april well none it wasn't even just that it was but but we've got deadlines we've got to get yeah. this done by this day. And mm. went, then you're not doing a people-centric approach you're doing a, a deadline call, a technology drop yeah yeah which is a different thing altogether they said oh well yeah. we'll do it um within the it people said so that's just going to give you a false positive because they understand it they they're already in the know they already get yeah. it you know if you want genuine test of mm. is how this is going to work and and what then needs to be done hence what communications need to go out and how and what training needs to be done and how you know you need to actually mm. do a proper test otherwise you'll, you'll just get that false positive and it's not going to and a that'll be it, a waste of time a waste of resources mm. a waste of money Yes, yeah, and and what we've done here is we've gone disappearing off down a rabbit yeah. hole. We're going to cut that. My fault. We're going to come back, and I want to introduce you properly. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the thing is, it's such an interesting conversation that you know off we've gone. But I'm pulling it back, um, Jennifer. How did you end up doing what you're doing, and who do you do it with now? So, what's your story? Oof. Right. Okay. Way back in the olden days. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, genuinely, um, I got into this from a bizarre perspective. So I used to be, once upon a time, a dancer, a a ballerina, and uh, an actress. And when, long, long story short, uh, I finished my studies. I came over here to study further. I'd been professional um, in New York and all the rest of it, I came up here and studied, and once I started to finish up my studies, I went, you know what, I don't really want to do this anymore, mm-hmm. but I have no clue what the heck I wanted to do. So then I tempt way back when, Kelly Services was a thing, um, and was just a PA and so forth, and I got really lucky. And I was a PA for this uh, executive director, uh, a systems integration of an uh, organization, and he was talking to the manager director at the time. They said, we really need to get help the team um, on some public speaking or presentation skills. And so they came to me and they said, Jennifer, you've done mm. you've done all of this before. Can you create a course? That was us? really lucky, wasn't it? So there's no skill behind that at all. Nothing. You didn't actually engineer anything. There was nothing, nothing. nothing yet. No, it was not luck. It, it, it was not luck. It, 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 I said, I've never done it. No, it, no. It, it, do you want to create this course? I went, yeah. There sure. you go. You know, my, my, it was not my luck. My 24 year old self was just going, yeah, okay. How the heck do I do that? So you had skills that were recognized and you were approached and you said, yes. I said there that. is no luck. Sorry, I am I am so hot on that. <laughs> it, dri- it drives me nuts. You know, you weren't sat down in front of Coronation Street for, for, for years no. on end no, and, and the phone rang and said, hey, Jennifer, I don't suppose, could you come and manage this change process for us? No. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So anyway, I designed this course, and it was a public speaking course because uh, what I noticed because they actually had a presentation skills course in house already, and I went, why are they asking me to do this? And then I looked down and went, ah, that's why. It's all about the presentation, mm. and not about the person. And I've always said, look, you can have the most 
fantastic presentation with a laser light show and nowadays drones and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. But if you can't stand up and deliver it, you might as well stay home in bed. So it was about the people side of it. And it went swimmingly well. And needless to say, I came home after the first day. I said, I don't want to do with my life. And, um, and, and so I got into learning and development. And then very early on, I realized there is no learning without change. And there's no change without learning. And so very quickly got into change mm. management. And so that's kind of how things have, have manifested itself. And in regards to who do I work with now, it's people who need help. I am, uh, you hit that help button, I am there. Um, whether that is you help, helping you with a big change that's going on, a little change that's going on with a particular challenging staff member or situation, mm. or with my friends picking out the right pair of shoes. I just love to help. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um, let's explore a few a few ideas here. Um, so one of the things that I was sort of looking at and maybe considering is the difference between a planned change. Mm. You need to introduce a new system, a, 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 a new something, yeah. but that, that you have a lead in time. You know that you are going to be doing this or that you need to do it. Yeah. And actually enforced change where just something happens and you have to, you know, it, it's, it's dunk yeah. and you actually have to do something really quite quickly. Yeah. Um, where should we start with this? Uh, i tell you what we'll do. We'll start with your model because you have created the AB change model, haven't you? I have. So why, why did you create that and what is it? Okay, so um, I created the model because I was uh, doing a lot of coaching with some very senior civil servants at the time. And they would come in and say, yeah, 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 Jennifer, I know about Carter, but what the heck do I do with this thing mm. on my desk? And so I decided that was the question I wanted to answer when I was doing my master's dissertation. And it's a very practical person. So I wanted to do something that was going to be real, that people mm. get their understand and, and, and okay. actually implement. And yes. And, um, and I named it AB Change Model because um, I was a young mom then and decided to name it after my kids. So I have child A, Amelia, child B, Blake, and they changed my world. (laughs) (laughs) As cliche as that. Um, But, Ginny, that's where it all came from, and it's a leading change model. And um, it what it essentially does is what it is you need to do, first off, is understand what type of change you're dealing with. And you need to really get to the root cause of what is it you're trying to achieve with this at the ultimate. Because a lot of people say, oh, it's, 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 it's visionary and it's radical and it's... That, which which and is just a load of old words, isn't it? Yes. And I'm going, what's at the root of it? What are you trying to do with this change? And more often than not, it's about improvement. Mm. It's about healing some discourse. It is about um, actually getting the best out of your team, you know, all of these different things. Once you understand what it is you're dealing with, then the rest is done for you in regards to, this is the type of leadership style you need to be demonstrating, these are the change skills you need demonstrating in order of priority. Uh, Now, with that said, you know, there's two caveats to all of that. Uh, Well, really three. One is, if you aren't true as to what the type of change you're actually dealing with, you're going to be embarking down the wrong path. So you need to get real with that first step because the rest is done for it. So you will go down the wrong direction entirely if you don't get that first step right. Two, if you focus uh, the majority of your time, 80% of your time on the least important change skill rather than the most important, it's going to go horribly wrong from that standpoint. And then three, you know, which is the big, big, big question is, so what? What does that mean to you? What, you know, if, I, if it says that you need to um, be demonstrating a coaching leadership style, for example, how you define that and how I define that will be slightly different. So what does that mean to you? What is mm-hmm. having a coaching style and how are you going to know you're doing it? How are others going to know you're doing it? And that's where it really starts to come to the fore. So I'm going to go back to your original thought in regards to how do you deal with a planned change 
rather than the one that goes ding, there it is, like the pandemic. Mm, for yes. Example. Yeah. Um, very good example on, you know, it just suddenly landed on our doorstep. Some would argue. Um, <laughs> and um, from, from that standpoint, and that is, yes, this works really well in a plan change because you can actually strategi- strategize, did I get to say that right? Um, things out and, and build your plans based on all of that information. At the same time, though, when it just lands, what you need to, before you do all of that, before you get to the point where you're implementing the AB change model, before you get to the point when you're actually planning a change, is understand what is it that you want to be as an organization. Now, that sounds like, oh, we all have vision statements where we want to be um, the uh, number one consulting firm in the UK. What, what is heck? that? What is that? <laughs> What does that mean? That's not a vision um, on that Mm. standpoint. You know, we need to actually drill on what is it that we want to be as an organization. And then when suddenly the pandemic comes in, we're right. All right. If we know we want to be this, then we need to say, all right, what's going to help us get there and deal with everything that's suddenly dropped in? And that's building that flexibility in the um, adaptability for us to actually flex in the moment because even on a plan change you know what plans change Mm-hmm. What what so, one one thing that I was getting from what you were saying there, mm-hmm. which has just sort of occurred to me, is it, we, you know, I want we want to be the number one coaching organisation in the in in the states, is that I can't, and I don't know whether anybody else can actually picture that. Mm-hmm. I have no picture of what that looks like. Is it twenty thousand people jumping up and down with their arms in the air, uh, or is it two people sat down across the table having a one to one? I don't know, but I think if you can't picture it. Nobody, Nobody else, else can picture it. Exactly. And, and, and I think that that may well be the key to knowing what it is that you want to create is actually, can you generate an, is, is, can you get people to generate an image of this? Exactly. And does, it t- does, does your image look like their image, even, just even remotely? Exactly that, mm. exactly that. So I was working for an infrastructure organisation a few years ago and they had a vision uh, to be digital by default by a certain year. And... I said they went, okay, sounds good. What does that mean? Nice little cliche. Yeah. Did you, it and sounds good. Yeah, it does. Sounds the good. Is, the program, by the time I came on board, had been running for, for actually nine months, you know, three quarters of a year. And there was a big frustration with the senior leaders of going, people aren't doing the, the new technology and, and using the process. So I went, well, that's because what you say is, is great and it sounds really good. And I listened for two days on all the good things that were happening. And I'm going, why should Maria in Brazil care about this? And, you know, wh- what's the point? And then they go, oh, efficiencies and effectiveness. And I'm like, that's just management spiel. Mm. You know, we actually, wh- what is it that, how is this actually going to change Her. Maria's yeah. day-to-day life? Um, mm. as she comes into the office and that's when the penny dropped and so we created this image of what it meant is is about changing of the mindset and so we had a picture of the mindset with the neurons going in and out and this and people went oh so we're going to start looking at that we went on an education perspective but you had to actually create that image and then the education journey to support that to help people visualize go oh that's what it means i need instead of thinking when um, my team member needs to go out and do an inspection on a bridge, he puts his hard hat on with the clipboard and everything. No, we need to be thinking digitally. What does that look like? I could put a GoPro on a selfie stick and the man in the boat, he go along, do it, take it back to the office and analyze the video for an example. You know, and so it's just that's what it, we needed to do and do differently is get that picture so the people start to, it clicks things into place. Also, when you looked at that sort of digital by default, it doesn't, what do I do? Mm. What do I actually do? Does that mean I spend more time on the computer? Do I throw away any pieces of paper that I have? It, it doesn't mean any, anything, exactly. does it? No. I'll tell you what, it, it, sometimes you hear people who come up with domain names and things mm. that are really clever. but nobody can remember them and they're really clever because if you go and look in several thesauruses you're going to find that there's this convoluted 
reason why the, <laughs> these collection of words may mean something. Mm. But if you have to explain it in that amount of depth, if somebody actually can't get it mm-hmm. in, in, in the sort of the first or second look, then... Yeah. They ain't going to get it. Yeah. It's gone. They have no... Exactly. They won't remember how to spell it. They've got no view of what it is or anything. Well, um, it, it's exactly that. I mean, we... You know, there's all the clichés of, you know, repeating your, your messages but making them very uh, repeatable in, in those first three seconds or, you know, mm. you'd be able to say what what it is that things are about within 30 seconds because if you don't, it's it's gone out. But it's, it's true. You know, it's why we remember... Um, mm. um, even though we may not watch adverts, we'll still remember um, uh, the, the, the loads of the different elements of Meerkat and, you know, the um, <laughs> comparethemarket.com yes. and you know, yeah. all these things, you know, we... They sit. They're nice. little. They're tiny little memorable snippets, yeah, aren't they? Exactly. So, so what you're saying initially is, it, it's not. You know, a, the, some of the mistakes that people make is that they focus on jargon. Mm. They f- they're focusing on jargon, and they're not actually like, what's in it for me? Exactly. So, what's what? You know, the person at the end of the line. What are, what do they understand that they are going to get? And that could be a member of staff, um, or it could be a customer. Could be could be anybody, couldn't it? It could be, but also it's about what's in it for them. The so what in regards to the change, how it's going to impact mm. them. But it's also when you're before you even um, the other element before you start to build your change plans, you need to understand where are they coming from, and so you need to understand what what's going on for them because that's the only way you're going to actually understand to be able to communicate that's going to make sense to them. So you need to understand what's going on for them from an external perspective. So the mm. politics, the legislation, um, the, the uh, economic fluctuations that have to be going on, for, you know, how that makes them feel and what they're thinking about at the moment, as well as the internal influencing factors of the politics within an organization, the different policies, procedures, the capabilities, the team and so forth. All of that comes into play. And once you get an understanding of that, then you can say, okay, this is probably what's going on in their head. And hence, what they might be thinking of this change. And if we need to, are looking to do the change, we're going to make the investment in this change. What do we need to do as a result to make sure that the change lands for them in the way that's going to make sense and they're able to then do it? Mm. Yes. I like that. Mm. I've got this question, and I'm not sure if it makes any sense at all, but I'm just going to go with it and hope, sure. I, and hope I can explain it. it. It was sort of prompted by you talking about the pandemic mm-hmm. and my experience with that, which was as running events, mm-hmm. having a radio show, is that and, and everybody's experience initially, oh. I believe, was actually not knowing what was happening, um, and that it was it was like this sort of creeping change. So something happened, and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, right, well, I can't run events for the next three weeks, mm-hmm. um, and so <laughs> you know, not being a pandemic specialist, and I, and I think really not realising what was happening. So I I sort of implemented a change that took me over three weeks, and it's lovely to look back in hindsight over a two year period and what I would have done differently, but it got me thinking that that sometimes. We may not recognise that change is happening. Mm-hmm. Yes. That actually, there is change going on. We just haven't seen it. We haven't looked for it and we haven't seen it. And so the period of time where we might have been able to implement stuff, it then, it then we sort of, we may or may not hit a crisis point, um, but it may just sort of bimble along. So... Is there anything that we can perhaps do, if you like, up front, just to see, you know, what's happening underneath? Does that make any sense at all? I think I know where you're getting at. It's about taking a look and it's it's almost like when you're, when you before you step into the ocean, is there a riptide going on? Um, underneath that you can't you know, yeah you you, you know you, you're and I, I'm not sure that I'm talking about forecasting no. uh, because that's a sort of a conscious process isn't it but it's just like you know you're you're going on you know we're yeah. bimbling along and actually there is something happening underneath that we're just not aware of because we haven't looked um and I think it's that it, it's about and um, that's very much around questioning mm. so um 
I talked about the external influencing factors. You know, we, as a business, many times we're looking at the strategy. We'll probably do it on an annual basis. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes not even that often. Sometimes a bit more often. Depends on the t- different. If you're a startup, mm-hmm. um, or if you are one that's long in the tooth and been around for decades, um, from that standpoint. So, but it's about I think keeping the strategy documents live and the, that yeah. the strategy okay. side of it alive. Um, process um, from that standpoint. So you're always asking the questions, right? We've not just we've been doing this for a while. You know, how's it going? It's what impact is going on, and is there anything else that's bubbling that might actually change this in any mm. way? And it and that's it's bringing a bit of foresight into the equation, but on a more regular basis, on a more continuous basis. Most organizations, you know, you'll have a weekly team meeting or a f- monthly team meeting. Do you need to bring it up every week? No, but once a month, why not say, is there something else that could actually impact what it is that we're doing here? What's what's going on? You know, we do it in some of the big ways. We think uh, there's some legislation, because it's all been in the news, there's some legislation coming down the mm. line, and that's going to impact the retail sector. Huge. Um, yeah. You know, Dora is is are is all the retail retailers aware of Dora? That's going to make a major major difference um, to people because it comes into legislation this year. Mm. Um, from that standpoint, for example, for, but for most things when it comes to legislation, we are looking. We're going okay. What's the government trying to do now? Because it's you know all over the the place. But we also take a look at okay. Um, we can see that the energy prices are going up. So what um, what that's going to do with the economic flow, how, how might that impact things? So it's about taking a look at what's going on, always mm. asking ourselves what could actually impact what it is that we're doing so that we're bringing that foresight, as I said, mm. into a more regular routine. Because one of the big yeah. things, we've been talking about how change is constant for at least two decades. And... Um, but we haven't actually changed how we deal with it. And I, I believe, and, um, and I, I'm I kind of singing for the praise of April Ryan here with her, um, with her bu- uh, book of Flux, we need to be looking at it as a something that is not just a end-all, be-all, and it happens occasionally. It happens every day. Every day. And we need to actually be building as a result flexibility and the adaptability in us and in our systems, in our operations, so that we can deal with it on a daily basis. I mean, we as people, we, we deal with um, very basic changes all the, all time. the time. Yes, all the time. We don't even think twice about it. But it's it. almost like our own business, or yes. the, the business side. It's it, it, it's separate, isn't exactly. it? It's and suddenly we feel we have to do this long projection and and these, these big you know visioning sessions where we are looking twenty years down the road and all the rest. Oh. And you're going. Um, no, we just need to say right. There's this going on. How if if this is where we want to get to in twenty years, we want to be mm. whatever it is we want to be. You know, if this new legislation comes into play, how is that going to impact us? And hence, what do we need to do to make sure we still get to where we want to go? You know, are we going to need to go this way for a little while so we can get back to it? Or actually, do we need to abandon that and do some and look at things differently and mm. do something else? So, so I think it, it, it's potentially about when, when it's when we're looking at sort of general impact that may change what we can do or what we should do it's about getting a trusted source in in, in the environment that you're in actually isn't it you know if you're in the US if you're in the UK get something that applies somebody or something that applies to you applies to your 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 actual sector and tap in with them mm-hmm make sure and and perhaps um you know just surveying for change you know what's going on how are people feeling what are they buying just having a look at at the shifts that are going that are happening so that you can adapt um as you need to exactly it's um, it's about constantly assessing Mm. the situation um rather than saying oh we've done the analysis now tick Um, yeah okay you know yeah many times we we approach change like a project project plan that's where it started from but it's 
different. It's bigger. Mm. It's, it, it has evolved. It is something that we are working with on a regular basis, and we need to stop trying to deal with it in a linear basis, and as a result, look at it from a holistic basis. And, um, and what I mean by that is holistic is about all-encompassing. And it's about bringing all of that to the play and, and what does that then look and feel like and what, how is that going to, as a result, manifest I think I think that can be so difficult to do on your own, can't it? Because yeah. you, you've got this sort of, as much as we like to think we're looking broadly, I, very often I think we're not, unless we're nudged into it and somebody sort of challenges us yes. with some questions. We, 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 we have a view, don't we? we? We have a view. We do. And I think this is what, when you're working on your, when you're a sole proprietor um, with an artist, it's really important to have that coach, mm. you know, to have an advisor, someone who, because... You know, as much as we reflect, and, and I'm a big reflector, but we have our own blind spots. Yeah. You know, yeah. Th- there's the Jahari window out there for a reason. Um, and the, the whole, we can't see everything. And we shouldn't actually always see everything. We can't be the gurus of all information. We need input from other people mm. to actually help uh, stimulate and, and uh, bring new insights and new data effectively into how we're thinking and going, ah, oh, I actually haven't even thought about that. Perhaps I should. Yes. So I think if you're a larger organisation and you have access to resources and people, potentially we can bring in somebody such as yourself. Mm. If you're perhaps a you know a, a solopreneur mm-hmm. um, or you have a very very small team and you know that you want to implement a change i think first of all the the, the tricky thing and i'm really good at this is actually not knowing that you're you know that that going hey i'm gonna build a new website no, 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 no. and off i go <laughs> <laughs> off i go you know, and sort of like five days down the line, I'm thinking, oh, God, oh what, is, what is this about? Um, but actually realising that what you're doing is a change that needs you to stop mm-hmm. and actually take stock. So um, the solopreneur sat there. Um, what can they do? What can they do? Several things. One is read books that are not on your industry. that are on sidestep industries. So, for example... Um, I read books uh, by Daniel Susskin, who's an economist, and you know, and he's coming at mm-hmm. everything from an economic perspective, which is not something I typically go mm. down. But I, I read it, and I'm like, oh, and I, I would literally read a couple pages, and I have to put it down. But oh, so that would mean, hmm, uh, okay, let me uh, <laughs> and and start to put that into context. So reading. Um, books or, or different perspectives that are out of your exact field um, or industry so that you can get those different perspectives in, as well as actually, if you've got a, a small team, um, ask them, what do you think is going on? What do you, Have you heard anything? You know, what, what do you do? Mm. Listen to different podcasts, listen to different radio stations, you know. It, I think it's really key, however, whatever medium you want to utilize, that you get different perspectives into what it is that you do. I think very often when we're listening to podcasts, that there has been a trend towards listening to podcasts about wellness. Yes. And I, I didn't mean it to sound like that, but about wellness, about personal development and that sort of thing. And I think what we're saying here is actually that's love, that's great, but you need to listen to podcasts about stuff, mm-hmm. economics, trends, lifestyles, other things that are going on in the rest of the world, not just about your personal development and how you can make yourself better. Exactly. There's a load of, you know, there's a lot, mm. there's a whole community of futurists. Yeah, out there. and they have a load of podcasts. Now, maybe some of it um, you sit there and you go, "Oh, I, I think they're whistling Dixie on that one." So, um, but it, you're you're taking that. You're thinking it's, thinking it's it's yeah, putting, and yeah. maybe it's not that exact thing, but it might be. But what if it's not that, but slightly something mm. else, and that could and hmm, let me you know. So there's you know there's futures out there's economists out there. There'll be. Um, you're, you know, various different HR people out there, your marketing people, all the different types of people are out there and they're all doing podcasts. There's mm. a lot of change professionals doing podcasts. 
It's about getting those different perspectives in and, and then say, and then asking yourself the question, what, what relevance, if any, this could have on mm. me, my team, and my business? So me, my team, my business, and actually sort of getting all of that in there. And I think you're going to have to look for these podcasts. I think once you find them, they're really, really obvious. But if you very often go to things like Audible and that sort of thing, very often what they are promoting and what they're bringing up to the front of the, here's something we found for you, is everything that you've been looking at before. Or it's it's around the most common topics at the moment, which is back to the wellness, mental health, all of that sort of thing. So go hunting around uh, because these are a, 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 a big podcasters aren't they they're not it's not that they're little guys sat there with you know one or two people but you may have to hunt and and do a little bit of a deeper search mm-hmm. so or well, some are some are yeah you know, people who are yes who do similar things yeah you know they are out there they are trying to make the best of what they mm. can do but they see things differently because they've got a different knowledge base they've got a different perspective they've got a different insight and, and hence that they bring that to the fore and they've got the medium and the, and the motivation to do that. And I think a lot of, um, I'm seeing a trend where a lot of journalists that before were attached to well-known media mm-hmm. sort of outlets are now striking out and are using their voice and they don't have, they're not, they're not, guided or tied by somebody else's opinion or view or politics and those are really you can find quite a few of them on Substack actually, Um, that is really quite a good way to start getting information It is, it is, and also when Mm. you're a sole entrepreneur there's a lot of business commerce um, groups out there as well there's a lot of different networking groups where you can tap into Mm. and, and go and say, you know, what do you think about this thing going on over here? Yeah, so what we've got here is global change, if you like, or or, or, or a big change. So it could be mm-hmm. it could be legislation change. Yeah. It could be it could be retail habits, you know, across the UK or the US or whatever. But also get down into the networking groups, the local groups. Mm-hmm. So it could be a local chamber of commerce. Um, people like the FSB in the UK yeah. um, are also very good at sort of keeping you up to date on what's going on in, in the UK, but also in your area. And and so look at both of those aspects and just sort of keep tap you know tapped into what's happening locally that's likely to affect you yeah and and, mm. and getting those different perspectives from different um business areas mm. so um looking at sort of broadly mm-hmm. if you were looking at making a change what is your top tip for somebody making a change all right. So, first of all, the big question is why? Mm. What what's what's driving the change? Why do you think it's necessary? Um, the second question is why now? Why not six months time or six months ago? And then thirdly, what are your people going to think and feel about it? Are they gagging for it? Are they going to go, oh, that's just one more thing I've got to think about? Are they mm. going, I know it needs to happen, but not now. I need it to happen two months later because it's end of year and I've got a list longer than my arm to get through <laughs> with at the moment. You know, so what are they yeah. thinking? So it's those three questions. Is Those are the first three questions I ask any potential client. Is why, what is, what, what's driving it? Why now? And what are your people going to think and feel about it? Do you know that thing there? So often we get people who will come to us, for, they, they want a website rebuilt or they want a website and they just want one. Mm-hmm. So, well, why do you want one? Yeah. Well, it's just what you do, isn't it? Or, oh, I don't like this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that, do you not like about it? <laughs> and that, what, yeah, why? Why? And very often there isn't an answer and they have to be guided mm-hmm. through that process. And, and sometimes you come out the other end and actually there is no need for either a website or to redo what they've got. Mm-hmm. That actually it was just a notion that they, they came up with or something wasn't working. Something wasn't working. The phone wasn't ringing. Therefore, I need a new website. Mm-hmm. It's the website that's wrong. And very, it may not be the web. It could be yeah. that the phone's broken. 
Yeah. Or it, it could be that um, you don't have it up on the analytics yeah. because you don't have enough of the keywords, yeah. this, that, and the other. Yeah. So it's about not making not making assumptions. And one of the things um, that when we were chatting initially, um, one of the assumptions that's very often made is that people actually don't like change. Uh. And I think if you come at it, if, you, if you're coming at making a change, either for yourself or, or, or when you're, you're involved with other people and you're coming at it from the point of view that actually people don't like change... That's not necessarily true, is it? It's totally wrong. In my, it, totally okay. wrong. Because as we said earlier, people deal with change every single day. Suddenly the M25 is blocked, so they need to choose a different route to work. Or XYZ road is blocked, whatever it may be. And they've got to choose a different route. Suddenly they wake up and their child is sick. And now all the meetings they had planned in the office, they've got to move online. or whatever. We deal with change all the time. The point is... People are fine with change. They don't mind change. What they do mind is being changed. So that's the big difference. And so when we're looking at change, we need to understand what else is going on. Hence, that third question of what are they going to think and feel about it? Because they aren't going to want to be changed. You know, if you sat there and told me, um, Jennifer, you've got to go to X, Y, Z. I go, Why? What, what's it? Or stop wearing trousers or, or whatever or change your or top from blue to red. Wear, or you can't wear your heels. I'd be like, yeah. you're having a laugh there. <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. If people don't want to be changed, they're quite happy mm. to change, but it needs to be something that they want to do. I mean, anyone who's had kids, you know, in, 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 at that fabulous age of two, <laughs> why, why, Bye. why, why, you know. We aren't actually any different as adults. You know, we mm. need to understand what is going on behind it so that we can actually, because um, we'll, once we understand that, we may not be happy about it, but we're going to be more willing to do mm. it. One of the things that I remember from sort of having, I, from managing lots of people in a local government situation and having um, like a new IT system imposed, if you like, mm -hmm. one of the comments was, don't they know what's going on down here? Exactly. So, 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 and I think that's also part of it is is that actually this change is being imposed by people who actually have not taken the trouble to look at what your problems are, either whether what you're imposing is relevant or it's timely, or whether they're doing it in the right way. But it, it's that they, the powers that be, have no idea what's happening down here exactly. on the ground. Exactly, and that's why mm. for me that my big mission is putting people at the heart of the decision-making room because that decision-making room is yeah. the boardroom you know and and we need to be thinking about the people what's going for them before we start to say hence oh we're gonna go make ourselves digital by default oh we're gonna go and you know implement this new system because uh, we've got to upgrade our finance system because this one's going to go obsolete yeah. everyone understands that but let's look at how we do that, the timing of it, what's going mm. to happen, and the impact that that has, because our people are are going to say yay or nay. You know, mm. when they'll find a workaround if they yeah. don't like it. Yes, they'll find a workaround. yes. And it, it's the one thing that I think is coming out of this for me is it's just about asking questions. Just keep asking questions, asking questions. Don't draw and don't ask questions that have actually got conclusions in them already. Mm. Um, but, and also challenge your assumptions. Mm. You know, okay, so you can see that there's a legislation coming around. You're then going to make most likely an assumption that that will have or challenge that assumption. Mm. You know, and constantly challenge. Don't be satisfied that everything will. It'll all just be okay, and, and people will just get on with it. You know what? They won't. Yeah. You know, there will be some situations where they do, but uh, right now, where things are at, people have had enough. So it's mm. about, and if you want to hold on to the talent that you've got, if you want to be an organization that su survives, uh, because there's the McKinsey stat that I'm sure a lot of people, um, a lot of your listeners have heard, um, a McKinsey report that came out in 2016 and got updated in 2020 that said that 75% of the organizations that were at that time listed on the Standard & Poor Index would no longer exist by 2027. 
Now that's three years down the line, and that means mm -hmm. there are 75% of organizations that are going to be bought out, they're going to be merged, or they're going to go bankrupt. And that means they've got to change and adapt, or they're no longer going to exist. And they need to, to change and to adapt means you've got to bring your people along with you, mm -hmm. because your people are going to enact the change. It won't just miraculously happen. And even if you are a smaller organization, that is all still relevant. So, exactly. you know, because we need to change yeah. our own behaviors. You know, we're looking at AI. A lot of us would have thought 10 years ago, we, we didn't really use AI as ourselves in our organizations, but I challenge anybody that's a sole proprietor that doesn't do it now. I tell you what, we might get you back for another show when we're going to discuss the impact of AI. Um, but for now, how can people get hold of you, Jennifer? So people get hold of me in several ways. One is LinkedIn under Jennifer L. Bryan, B-R-Y-A-N. Uh, next is my website, which is www.jenniferlbryan.com. And also jennifer.bryan at abchangeconsultancy.com is my website. And lastly, on Instagram, jenniferbryan-changeleader. Jennifer, you have had a really interesting journey from dancer to change <laughs> yes. management specialist. What do you know now that you wish you'd have known when you started out? Oh, my goodness me. Um, that's... Wow. Uh, I, I think if I was to go back and uh, before I even, when I just first started out as a dancer, and that's going into my teens, is that even though I may not be the dancer that I thought I would be at that stage, you know, now, and hence, you know, the, the, the Darcy Bustle or the uh, Marco Fontaine and, and so forth, it was all be okay and the journey will be amazing. And that's the important part of it because it, it, all of it embellishes and enriches the story and helps people in a load of different ways that you would never imagine what a lovely note to finish on jennifer bryan thank you so much for being our special guest today thank you very much for having me i appreciate it and it's been brilliant talking about putting people at the heart of the decision making room see you all next week thank you so much everybody bye <laughs> Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business.